was told that oversouls and souls that incarnate in the higher planes, soul offsprings that are incarnated into the higher realms of the astral, all of them view this lowest and densest realm of embodiment as a hell. Here is in Malkuth is the most painful realm of suffering because people believe they are so separate from each other and there is so much of war and pain and suffering. And all of this suffering is being felt throughout the whole entire Amen fabric of the universe and brought back into the experiences of the primal self of D, of which we all are beyond time and space. When this shift happens, all of the embodied soul offspring that are in Malkuth will be released from their embodiments and be shifted to a higher state of awareness of which the soul should reside in the light and fullness of joy of which souls became first aware. I was also told again that this group, group 4, that has been incarnating for 3,300 years, of which I am a part of, I am one of their, of their soul, soul offspring, as are one sixth of all humans in Mount Kuth, that they are not going to incarnate offspring again into this realm, and as a way of, of atoning for this, they are going to release every one of their soul offspring that has been integrated into the oversoul essences of these 22, they are going to then release them and allow them to forever act for themselves as angel souls. I have also asked them in my discussions with them over the past six months of what Christians term to be a resurrection because I've been curious about this and they told me that they now have the ability to be able to extend an embodiment of their own selves and now remember an embodiment is organizing light around the self the self-aware focal point of observation that is actually the soul that is substanceless an embodiment is being able to organize the astral light around your focal point of observational awareness and create an embodiment for it in which it can be expressed in time and space and they are now able to extend their embodiment from the highest realm of Tipperith, which is um, not the highest realm of the astral, but the highest realm of which souls became self-aware, all the way down into the vibrational realm that is directly above Malkuth, which is the lowest part of what people consider to be the astral. And that they are able to embody themselves in a unity now, instead of having to embody themselves, a, a soul embodied separately in each of these, these astral realms. Their embodiment is able to extend from Tipperith all the way down to right above Malkuth. And um, they are not going to ex extend their embodiment down into the realms of Malkuth. But that means that they are able to have a unified self-awareness of embodiment throughout all of the lower planes of the astral, extending up to Tipperith, but not going below Malkuth. And able to experience themselves in awareness on all of these levels. Right now, in Malkuth, you and I are individual souls begotten of these oversouls, and we are not directly connected to them in our awareness, and for that reason, we are not aware of ourselves as being them, although they can communicate with us, and many of us call them our higher selves. These oversouls are not our higher selves. We are begotten of them. We are no more a part of, they are no more a part of ourselves as a mother and father is a part of yourself. But yet, beyond this life, we will be able to do as they are doing after we are released from Malkuth. We will be able to extend our embodiments, should we choose, into the realms that extend on the Tree of Life and the Kabbalah, extend from Tipperith all the way down into the lowest realm of the astral, but not including Malkuth. So this is what is termed as a resurrection. And I've been told that they, even in the lowest realms of the astral, they very much see themselves as physically embodied in those realms, but yet can extend their awareness all the way up to where souls became self-aware, first self-aware within the astral light of Timberth. I also want to briefly tell you about my own self, my own soul, that is currently embodied in Malkuth. And I don't do it for self-aggrandizement, in fact I don't. I just, I almost hesitate to do it, but I've been told that it is okay for me to do it, so I'm going to, even in spite of the ridicule it may incur. When I was 19 years old, back in 1989, 1990, I was laying down, taking a nap in my living room, and somebody had come up to my ear, a disembodied soul that I didn't see, but heard the voice, it was the voice of a woman, and the voice called me David three times, and that is not my name, I was not named David, my my name is Rob in this life, but the soul called me David three times and woke me up, and I woke up and I knew somebody had been calling me, but then when I came to look around the room, 
I realized that they had called me David and not Rob, and I had wondered why. But I also realized that when I had been called David, I instantly woke up and knew that it was, they were calling me. This person was calling me. And uh, it was this very sweet voice of a woman, and she did it in a sing-song voice, and it sounded much like David, David, three times. I had always wondered why I had been called that, and I had been over the past 18 years to several intuitives, and one of which was Catholic, who did not believe in reincarnation, and she told me, she said it definitely had something to do with the role of, something to do with King David, some kind of a connection. I've been told that through several other different intuitives, but I was in denial of it and just figured I didn't know what to make of it. But over the past six months, I have been communicating with these oversouls through an, in, an intuition communication that is somewhat like you know, that that resembles automatic writing. Um, I do not write, but I hear their thoughts, although I do not recognize it. What happens is I hold a crystal or some kind of object in my hand. I will ask a question and my body intuitively moves to the right or to the left and at first um, I was not entirely sure of what to do with this but I had been told so many things that I had no knowledge of before that I I have no doubt that this is coming from the sources that it's coming from they have taught me so many things about the Kabbalah, the Tree of Life about incarnations, about souls and angels and names I had never even heard of and I have to tell you in all honesty that I know what I am saying is true. I was told that I am the last sole offspring of that which was in the astral realm that had been dis disassociated from me. And I was also told that the oversoul that created David was, was Ben and that I am the last offspring that was to be incarnated in Abu as um, Ben David, the extension of Ben David. And I have also told them that I do not want to return to oneness with David, that David is the father of my soul, but I do not want to ascend into oneness with David. I forever want to maintain my individuality, and I asked them if I could have a name by which I could still include David as in my name, but not be David. And they gave me the name, they spelt it out for me, um, as D-A-N-E, which is Dane, Dane, and they said that that means David separate, and that from this point forth, through all the eons to come, as a soul, I will be called Dane, and will not return to oneness with David, although I will maintain a close relationship with the Father of my soul. And all of these souls that I have told you about in group number four are all of the parents of the one-sixth of the human population. One-sixth of the human population comes from these 22 souls. There is a change that is about to happen on the earth, and um, this is all part of it, I've been told. And I'm not sure exactly what my role is in this. All I know is that I'm sharing with you everything that has been communicated with me. I am not going to keep it to myself, um, and that is why I've recorded it here and put it forth for those who are interested. And again, I want to tell you that I'm not setting myself up to be some kind of a teacher or a guru. I am just telling you what has been told to me. I also wanted to tell you this, and that many Christians are going to find this blasphemous, but I don't care. Um, the soul that has been communicating with me, aside from David, and telling me these things and letting me know all of this information, was that who had been begotten by the oversoul of Czech, and that was Jesus Christ. And I have been communicating with him in the same way that I've been, uh, that I've told you through the automatic writing. And I know that many people are going to ridicule this. Uh, I don't care. But uh, what I have said is truth. And I know it is. After completing this three-part video series on group number four, I asked the Oversouls if there was anything that I needed to add. And they told me, yes, they told me that they want me to tell you that they know you that they love you, that they care, and that they are eager to know you face to face when you are beyond Malkuth. Thank you.